الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا وحبيبنا وعظيمنا وقائدنا محمد بن عبد الله الصادق الأمين وعلى آله وصحابته الغر الميامين وعلى كل من سار على من واله واكتفى آثاره واحتدى بهداه بإحسان إلى يوم القرار والخلود والثبات والدين أما بعد براز أن سيسترز السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته It is a pleasure having this wonderful opportunity to discuss about one of, if not the most important of Islamic pillars, that is at Tawheed. Before going further, we have to remind all of us, all of us that the main purpose of our being created in this world is to serve Allah exclusively. And that is the essence of Tawheed. Allah says in Quran chapter number 51, verses 56, 7 and 8. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I have not created the jinns and men, but for them to worship me exclusively. So you can see the purpose, the rationale, the reason, the wisdom of our existence is to serve Allah. If that is the case, and it is the case, that Allah should be served exclusively. That can only be achieved if Tawheed characterizes the mode, the typology of how we worship Allah the Almighty. So that is very important. You see, Allah says in Holy Quran chapter number 39, Surah number Zumar, from Ayah 65 to 66 respectively, Allah says, listen to it. وَلَقَدْ أُوْحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحَبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ بَلِ اللَّهَ فَعَبُتْ وَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ Inspiration has been given unto you, Ya Rasulullah, and unto those who came before you, that if ever you associate someone with Allah, all your deeds will be nullified. And you'll be among the losers. That is verse number 65. You go further. Six, he says, 66, he says, only Allah you should worship. So this tells you Tawheed and its opposite. Tawheed is the concept of worshiping Allah alone without setting up a rival against him. So now our topic is Tawheed as the gateway to the paradise. Gateway is what leads you to something. It is the system you undertake to actualize something very important. Your gateway to your degree, you attend your lectures, do your assignment, that's all. Your gateway to your cooked food, <laughs> present the condiment to your wife. Your gateway to reach to any country in the world, pay your whatever you have to pay before you have your ear ticket and go. So the gateway to paradise is not prayer first because the prayer, the salat, the zakat come only after Tawheed is structured. You cannot talk of putting the ceiling and uh, the finishing touches when the beginning touches are not there in your building. So before you talk of finishing touches, get the initiative first. So Tawheed is that beginning touches. Otherwise, you can never have something to come before that. Then go back to the ayah I quoted. The ayah says, وَلَقَدْ أُوْحِيَ إِلَيْكَ One by one. Inspiration has been given unto you. إِلَيْكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ And unto who came before you. What is that? لَئِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ If ever you do shirk. That is, you confuse your Tawheed. That is verse number 65 in chapter number 39, Surah to Zuma. If you do shirk, the opposite of Tawheed, all your deed will be nullified, will be rendered valueless, fruitless exercises, and you will be among the losers. Only Allah, you should worship. This is very important. 
That is why Al-Imam Al-Bukhari Muhammad ibn Ismail in his compendium Sahih Al-Bukhari in Hadith number 7371 and 7372 and 7373 respectively all the Hadiths of Ibn Abbas and the Hadith is also corroborated by other canonical uh, writings the Prophet said Mu'av, I am sending you to Yemen. You know Mu'av bin Jabal. He is the great scholar of the scholars. He's a scholarly scholar. He said, I am sending you to Yemen. Then he told him, Ya yeah, Mu'av, I am sending you to the people of the book. They are a people of the book. They know everything. Don't start by talking about prayer then. Don't teach them prayer. No zakat. No fasting. Start by teaching them Tawheed. You see the value of Tawheed? You prioritize the teaching first. Tawheed should be given unto them before prayer. So that is why if you come to a people, don't start talking about prayer or zakat or hajj. I mean, try to give them Tawheed. Somebody entering Islam newly, you don't start by saying pray. No, you start by saying, say la ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah to tell you Tawheed is number one. So Mu'adh ibn Jabal was told to go to Yemen, but let him start by teaching them Tawheed. Allah is the creator, the nourisher, the cherisher, the sustainer, the honor. He gives you life, he takes it away. He gives you breathing system, respiratory system, he takes it away. He is Alpha and Omega if you like it. So the only way you can reach Allah is through Tawheed. Everything comes later. You pray because Tawheed is there. Now, if you say, no, prayer is more important. I say, no, nah, prayer is important. But tell me, if somebody comes and begins to pray, he says, Ilaha ni akbara, instead of Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar means only Allah is the greatest. But somebody is not two gods, Ilaha ni akbara, okay, something like that. Two gods and majesty, the prayer will be thrown into his face because Tawheed is not there. Similarly, if somebody didn't say Sami Allahu Liman Hamida, he said Sami Al Wathan, Mathan, Authu Billah. The idol has heard me. So to tell you, if you don't unify Allah in the ibadah, you can never ever have your ibadah accepted. It is only shirk. The opposite of Tawheed, if somebody dies, Allah says, I will not forgive you. That tells you about the value of Tawheed. Read Quran chapter number 4, ayah number 78. Allah says what? In Surah An-Nisa. Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi, wa yaghfiru ma duna thalika liman yasha, wa man yushrik billah faqadiftara ithman azima. Allah does not forgive somebody that associate him with other gods, the opposite of Tawheed. But Allah forgives any other sin, not as big as shirk, for whom he desires. So if somebody dies, for example, committing zina, billah, stealing, becoming hypocritical, arrogant, you know, pompous, hydra-headed, drinking, become drunkard, there are chances of his own sins wiped away, minus shirk. But if somebody dies, Having other gods, Allah says, I will never grant you entry into the paradise. This tells you about the value of Tawheed. Similarly, in Quran chapter number 1, Surah Al-Ma'idah, ayah number 74, he says, Whoever that does shirk, فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَعَهُ النَّارِ وَمَا لِلْظَالِمِنَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ 572. Whoever that commits shirk, opposite to Tawheed, Allah has made Jannah haram, haram, haram for him. And the transgressors do not have somebody to help them. Brothers and sisters, we have to be careful about our Tawheed. Now, Tawheed with the definition given, unify Allah in worship. According to our ulama, Tawheed is divided into three main parts. There is Tawheed lil ar That is the Tawheed characterized by Allah's actions. Who created? Who gives lives? Who takes lives? Who, who, who? These are the actions. You give the answer only Allah. 
الله الله that is called توحيد الربوبيه that is توحيد characterize typifies by Allah's exclusive actions he feeds me he feeds you don't think somebody has the right so don't say don't tell somebody to don't say oh my father has fed me your father is only a gateway it's only a means but the actual provider is Allah rabbul alam my teacher taught me it's not bad to say that. it's not bad but the actual teacher is Allah rabbul alam that is category number one of tawhid tawhid rububiyya tawhid characterized by his actions the second class of tawhid which is most important is tawhid al ibadah unify allah by acts of worship okay what is ibadah according to ibn taymiyyah in his book al ubudiyya ibadah is defined as yani al 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 ibadah kul huwa ismun jami' لكل ما يحبه الله ويرضى من الأعمال والأقوال الظاهرة والباطنة. That is ibadah. Everything you utter, every action, if Allah loves it, if Allah wants it, that is ibadah. So this category number two of tawhid is most important. Otherwise, the unbelievers in Mecca they used to believe Allah created the heaven, but when they were invited to worship Allah exclusively. they began to drag their feet and even outrightly deny it so the most important of tawhid that we are talking about when we say tawhid the gateway to paradise we are talking of the category number 2 and category 3 number 2 i'm only repeating is you worship allah exclusively the way you eat is ibadah the way you drink is worship the way you meet your wife is an act of worship the way you look for the hand of a lady in marriage is bad. Unfortunately, a lot of people do not know this. They only think, well, worship is to say Allahu Akbar after terminating the prayer you do as you desire. That is a catastrophic and pathological mistake. You have to know that ibadah is all encompassing. It's inclusive and not exclusive. So by the time the second category of tawhid is not made you miss your golden key to the paradise you have to serve allah exclusively that is why some people you know mixing their ibadah with going to mami water spirit like we say in nigeria somebody claiming to be a muslim but he has amulet he calls upon evil spirit he goes to marabu the fortune tellers the parapsychologists the liars who fortune who tell you the future they are liars in islam if you die doing this you are missing your golden key to the paradise even though you claim to pray though you fast the month of ramadan but you have two gods the allah you you presume you are calling and you are joining somebody with allah against him allah hates to be joined with other lilliputians other created and that are nothing they can do nothing and undo nothing so that is the most critical of this categorization that is to be allah to be worshiped exclusively that's why you say allahu akbar you say la ilaha illallah you say qul huwa allahu ahad allahu samad lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad quran 112 from verses 1 2 3 or 4 tell them allah allah, allah ahad allah is one and only not allah wahid but ahad because ahad is much stronger in arabic than wahid so allah is the exclusive one to worship that is the most important man because today you see a lot of muslims claim to muslim but they worship satan so well, i can be a muslim and be satanist It's not possible. It's not possible. There are red lines, man. Okay? She claimed to be a Muslim, she goes to some to fortune to tell her the fortune. And please, yeah, Sheikh, I am married woman and I want you to check for me the future if I am going to be pregnant. Is he God? <laughs> you see Allah, my sister, you are committing shirk. That is is a big impediment against going to to the paradise. and please let me go maybe i am going to graduate i don't know 
Let me go to Emarabu. He is an expert in fortune telling. No, he's a liar. He's a bloody liar. Don't go to him. Rely on Allah if truly you believe. Otherwise, you are missing your golden key to the paradise. Somebody, you see him riding a car, but placing the picture of a big shack. Oh, this shack is going to protect my car against accident. Is that shack Allah? <laughs> Did he create you? Or oh, you see Muslims worshiping the grave. Because there is a wali in their claim. He's saint. He knows the unseen. He can see everything. That is wrong. Or oh, some go to some Jeans, the men of the, I mean the unseen world, looking for delivery, asking such a guru to give him medicine for his wife to conceive. I am not saying go into a medical doctor to find out the disease against childbearing is wrong, but we're talking about those people going to Marabu to tell you that's going to happen. Now, somebody may tell you, okay, in that case, what about, uh, uh, you know, a gynecologist who can tell you through scanning machine that your pregnant wife is going to give birth to a male or female child? They do it. They say, yeah, that is knowledge. That is an empirical knowledge. But let me ask you, if at all that doctor has been able to tell you the sex of your child, ask the doctor, okay. Mr. Doctor, Mr. Medical Guru, tell me, you told me my wife is going to give birth to Melanville. How old is that baby going to live before he dies? Tell me. How many white hair, gray hair is going to develop later in life? Tell me, doctor. Tell me the name of his wife or her husband he is going to marry later. <laughs> Can he tell you that? To tell you the knowledge of the medical practitioner you know, has a line. But what about the Almighty? Allah is omnipotent. The all-knowing, Allah is omniscient. So all we are saying, restrict your belief and worship to Allah exclusively. That is your golden key to the paradise. That is category number two of Tawheed. Take it again. Tawheed al-Rububiyya, Tawheed, characterized by Allah's actions. Sending down the rainfall is Allah's job. Giving me protection to have journey masses is Allah's job. That one is even believed in by all people. But the most difficult is the second one. I'm repeating for it to be remembered. That is Tawheed al-Uluhiyya. That Allah should be exclusively, mark my word and, 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 and qualification, should be worshipped alone. That is the trouble. The people in Mecca fought the prophet because of the second Tawheed. Why should he tell us to worship only one God? There are many gods. And today, I am like I'm telling you, there are a lot of many gods today. Somebody says, I am God myself. Audhu Billah. Depending on what you mean by God, even though I know God in English, the meaning is too insufficient, is too deficient. In Arabic, you say Allah. Allah is more important than the English word God. Because, okay, in English, God, you can make plural form of God. You say God. But you can't say Allah. So the word Allah is very unique. You cannot pluralize it. You can say semi-God or demi-God or Godfather. You can't say Allah Father. In English, you have Goddess, the feminine gender of God. You can't say Allah is. So the word Allah is uniquely unique, unparalleled, uncomparable. That is our religion. That is our belief. That is the beauty. So as a truly believing Muslim, a practically practicing Muslim, if you want to have your key, you want to maintain your key, golden key to the paradise, the gateway, maintain Tawheed by saying, La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah. Saying La ilaha illallah, this La ilaha illallah has even eight conditions. Maybe later, subsequently, we're going to meet and analyze the eight conditions of La ilaha illallah. Because merely say La ilaha does not guarantee you entering the paradise. 
you have to fulfill those conditions that are eight later we're going to talk about it inshallah ta'ala sometime much later inshallah or just sooner or later sooner or later but now we're talking about like i've told you tawheed as the gateway to the paradise the word of Tawheed is la ilaha illallah and this la ilaha illallah i said has eight conditions it's just like a key some key have some teeth if you insert the key into the hall without those teeth it cannot open so they are saying la ilaha illa is like that very key the conditions are those teeth that we shall hear about them later inshallah now that is the second category of tawhid that is la ilaha illallah i mean worshiping allah exclusively the third category of tawhid is tawhid al asma wa sifat that is allah should be unified through his names and attribute allah says walillahi al asma al husna fad'uhu biha to allah belong beautiful names and attribute so ask allah with his beautiful names is part of tawhid like allah has names allah ar rahman ar rahim al malik al quddus as salam these names are there 99 hadith allah has 99 names but i want to tell you if you want to know true name of allah you go to the quran or the hadith of the prophet some of those names are not allah's name like rashid ar rashid is not allah's name because allah didn't call himself ar rashid so it's incorrect it's not proper to name your child abdur rashid because ar rashid is not allah's name the name ar rashid occurs in only three places in the quran in chapter number 12 number 11 surah to hud rashid means the guided one okay who guided allah so you don't say abdur rashid Abdu the servant of Ar Rashid no 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 Allah is not Ar Rashid no 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 Allah is Al Murshid so Allah doesn't didn't call himself Ar Rashid so you can't name your son with the name Abdu Rashid though your intention is good and bad is a mistake that is important Allah's name is like like is Allah mm -hmm. you can say Abdullah Ar Rahman you say Abdul Rahman or Amatur Rahman that is the female version Ar Rahim Al Malik Abdul Malik Amatul Malik Al Hanan okay Al Manan either Allah calls himself or his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam so Allah has attribute and the ulama are say every name of Allah encompasses his attribute but not the opposite they are saying kull ismin fihi sifa laysa kull sifa fihi ism like Allah says wa yamkurun mm -hmm. Allah. they plan and Allah counter plans so don't call Allah planner or counter planner no, he doesn't call himself he counter plans his own quality attribute but it's not his name your Lord comes don't say Allah's name is the comma he comes no it's not done that way but Allah is Ar Rahman that is a name he has the quality of Ar Rahman so I am saying most especially you get a book written by our scholar a sheikh salih al uthaymin the name of the book is al qawaid al mufla fi asma allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very beautiful book very nourishing and very gratifying and satisfying brothers and sisters this is tawhid as the gateway to the paradise i don't know if brother abdul salam conducting the program with this 30 minutes has something to say or question if i have more time i have more to say back to you if there are things to be said i will come back again barakallahu fiikum no, you have you have more than 30 minutes oh okay. beautiful 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 now we carry on having said all this previously now we are going to talk about uh the the the, the evil nature of you know engaging in an action that negates one's tawhid i quoted an ayah in chapter number 4 surah to nisa verse number 48 and also 116 in the same surah allah says inna allaha la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi 
ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء ومن يشرك بالله فقد افترى اثما عظيما that is verse number 48 in chapter number 4 Allah does not forgive such a man or woman that associate a partner against Allah but he forgives anything less than that for whom he desires whoever that does shirk has invented a grievous sin that is ayah of verse number 48 in chapter number what number 4 the same message is mentioned if you go further in ayah 116 and i also quote it ayah number 72 in surah al maida innahu man yushrik billah faqad harrama allah alayhi al janna wa ma hu an-nar wa ma lil zalimina min ansar whoever that perpetrate an act of shirk allah has declared paradise forbidden against it now how do you see how do you feel somebody laying a laying a claim against your house you own your house through your sweat through your pension and gratuity as a worker you build your house and somebody say no this is my house how do you feel there's going to be trouble now there is shirk he want to be a co-owner whereas it is your own house how do you feel i'm saying if you as a human being you you find it very very bad somebody you know robbing shoulder with you against your ownership how do you feel getting somebody robbing shoulder with god in his majest, majestic presence somebody with his wife somebody know your wife is also my wife i can do what you do with her how do you feel if you are a man of honor you would definitely fight him so how do you feel raising up a partner against allah the almighty okay your certificate that you have worked for it your bachelor of art your masters your phd your professorial gap for example somebody comes and lay a claim to all these papers how do you feel so these are instances to tell you that shirk is very very negative something is very bad is bad one day anas in a hadith of muslim ibn malik rala anhu he said oh ye young man do you know what is the right of allah on his servant and the right of the servant on allah ana said allah wa rasuluhu what a'lam o oh, allah's messenger allah and his messenger no better no best he said listen the rights of allah on his servant is to worship him alone 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 exclusively without putting raising up a rival against him and the right of the servant of on allah is that he will not punish somebody who does not commit shirk you can see how important it is to maintain tawhid and to avoid commitment of shirk now after hearing for the last 30 minutes the categories of tawhid now we want to hear the categories of shirk of how many classes the ulama in their scholastic and scholarly way have classified and categorized shirk into two main categories major shirk and minor shirk all of them negate the essence of tawhid they can make you miss your golden key to the paradise a'udhu billah a'udhu billah a'udhu billah shirkul akbar major shirk is of three kinds there is shirkul ibada okay shirkul ibada i said it earlier to assign the power of worship to somebody like somebody falling down he calls the name of somebody or oh, so so she come to my assistance okay that is major shirk and i told you at the beginning of the program in quran chapter number 13 surah to zumar verses 65 66 walaqad uhiya ilayka wa ila alladhina min qablika la in ashrakta لا يحبطن عملك 
ولا تكونن من الخاسرين بل الله فاعبد وكن من الشاكرين if you dare resolve a rival against Allah all your deed will just be nullified will be rendered fruitless nothing so category number one of shirk is shirk al ibadah the second one is shirk al mahabba you love somebody as you love Allah the almighty but Allah says walladhina amanu ashadu hubban lillah the third category in the first uh, class of shirk is shirk al sharia you assume somebody can legislate human laws to be above Allah's laws. In Islam, we don't tolerate that one. That is concerning class number one of shirk al-akbar. Shirk al-ibadah, shirk al-mahabba, and shirk al-sharia. And that, that one before going to the minor shirk, okay? Major polytheism and minor polytheism. The major polytheism, the opposite of Tawhid, I told you of three classes. That is the shirk of ibadah. The shirk of mahabba. You love someone because of your love for him, you disobey Allah the Almighty. A'udhu Billah. Your teacher, your father, your family, you love them in disobeying Allah because you love them more than you love Allah. That means your love for Allah is a lie. Is baldadaj is not correct. That can make you miss your gateway to the paradise. A'udhu billahi min thai. Similarly, shirku sharia. Like I have said, to take human system, to rank it higher than Allah's system. Or any law, any constitution that is above the Quran. In Islam, no law, no code of ethic that ranks higher than the Qur'an. That is our belief. A truly believing Muslim, a truly practicing Muslim knows that Allah's law ranks higher than any other human legislated law. Otherwise, you are committing a shirk. You don't even know. Now, that is concerning the major shirk. The minor shirk is like a riya. You do something, you want people to just see you. You want to give sadaqah, you say, hey, cameraman, look at it, I'm giving. Oh, that means you are doing it. You want to be seen. You want to be heard of men. That is also a shirk. But the ulama are calling it a minor shirk. And the ayah for that is in chapter number 18, the concluding part of it. Allah says, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلِيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِإِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ What? Ahada. Whoever that wants to meet Allah in peace, not in pieces, in peace, not in pieces, let him worship Allah exclusively. He shouldn't raise up a rival against Allah. That is in Surah Al-Kafi, chapter number 18, uh, ending part of it. Now, it tells you, that is, the second part of uh, shirk, that is minor shirk. So don't commit riya. Some people do things for just, they want to be heard. They want to be appreciated of men. They want to be applauded or applauded, you know, applause. Yeah, they want to be known of people. If you do something that should be done originally for the sake of, but you want to be heard, you want to be seen, then Allah will never accept it. In a hadith, whoever that does something, something that should be done for the sake of, but he does it because he wants to be hit, to be heard of men, Allah says, Ana taraktuhu wa I am withdrawing, I am leaving him with those whom he is doing it for, for their own sake. So that is that one. Similarly, you do something because you want to be heard. So that is generally the meaning of uh, Tawheed and its categories shirk into two parts the first one major shirk with three departments shirk al ibadah that is the shirk of what worship the shirk shirk means like i've said polytheism putting an associate against the almighty in ibadah in sharia so also in mahabba that is in love you love somebody because because you love him you just disobey allah just to please him 
So this is very, very dangerous. Now, what is the way out? The way out is number one, to be perpetual knowledge seeker. You should be PKS. PKS, perpetual knowledge seeker. Because without knowledge, you cannot know all these details. You cannot. You will be in the darkness. Okay. But by the time you are informed, they are saying to be informed is to be formed. To be misinformed is to be deformed. We are not after def deformity. We want to be formed. So the way out of this quagmire is to be PKS, perpetual knowledge seeker. And alhamdulillah, the, the ulama are all over the globe. Unless if you are just like a daisical, you don't want to learn. You can learn in Nigeria, in America, in the Caribbean, any part of the world. Go to the scholars, learn, know Allah first. That is why the first inspiration to the Prophet, Iqra, read, read. Otherwise, wallahi shirk today. Lack of Tawheed is killing people. Believe you me. You see, I'm only just repeating because of the, you know, nature of WhatsApp. You see men, women going to the uh, fortune tellers. Fortune tellers. Liars. Parapsychologists. Because of this. Please, I want you to kill this extra. Because of uh, black magic. How can a Muslim practice black magic? Some go to throw away their tawheed. They want to get money. Through blood money, acrobatism. They, they become stinking rich, but out of satanic money. And so what? So I am saying the way out, seek for knowledge. And in trying to seek for knowledge, you have to discover the scholars that, that the cap pits them well. Not rapacious scholars who are half-backed, who just mix up between Tawheed and what they should. Seeking for knowledge. Wherever you happen to be, you don't have any excuse not to seek for knowledge. Number two, I am saying, I'm repeating, look for the scholars who know the stuff. Number three, to be away from committing shirk against the Tawheed, try to inculcate in your mind the fear of Allah the Almighty. You know, Wallahi al-Azim, committing shirk, associating a partner against Allah is more dangerous than zina. Zina is dangerous, but it's not as ugly as committing shirk. Because Allah says, well, fitna to akbaru min al-qatl, or al-fitna shirk is more dangerous than even killing or murder. So we should be careful with shirk. Way out seeking for knowledge. Look for the competent scholar. Number three, fear Allah the Almighty. Number four, keep good company. If you see any bad company inviting you to antics of shirk against Tawheed, keep your distance from him. They are, they are saying, tell me who your friends are, and I'm going to tell you who you are. If you keep bad company, you are likely going to imbibe the culture of the bad company. One scholar says, إِذَا كُنْتَ فِي قَوْمٍ فَصَاحِبِ خِيَارَهُمْ وَلَا تَصْحَبِ الْأَرْضَ فَتَرْدَى مَعَ الرَّدِ عَنِ الْمَرْءِ لَا تَسْأَلْ وَصَلْ أَنْ قَرِينِهِ فَكُلُّ قَرِينٍ بِالْمُقَارَنِ يَقْتَدِ If you're in a people, keep good company. Do not befriend a negative person because each and every friend tried to copy his own friends. That is important. Way out. Number five, keep an eagle's eyes on your kids. We are living today in a world that has a lot of dynamics today. It's very easy to see your child through cellular phone, through the blessings, okay, blessings of technology today, becoming something entirely else. Look at the kind of college your kids are attending. Otherwise, their Tawheed can be stolen. Okay? These are some of the ways, steps to be taken. And number six, try to be attending Islamic lectures, conventions, get together with like minds. Number four, or number six or seven, maybe I'm missing the count. Maybe you're with me, count what I'm saying. Try to make sure you have literary books, 
that talks about Tawheed intensively. Very, very, very important. Very, very important. Number eight, it is as well a way to be away from Shin, the opposite of Tawheed. Try to remember the torments during the day. If somebody dies committing shirk, you remember the kind of punishment. Because if a thief knows that he is going to be treated by the government through stringent measures, that is likely going to put a check on him. So check your excesses as a truly believing Muslim. Remember, you're going to die, you're going to be bathed and be taken to the grave, maybe to be eaten and consumed by the worms. Remember, with Tawheed, that is going to be your shield. Remember all these. Remember your final hours, your final days, when you're going to breathe your last. Angels are there to take away your life. Remember, the one to take your life is Malakul Maut. It's part of even Tawheed to know the name of the angels. It's part of Tawheed to know there is an angel called Gabriel or Jebrail, Mikael, okay, Israfil, who blows the trumpet for the last hour, and the angel that takes life. His name is not Azrael. His name is Malakul Maut, as in chapter number 32. Tell them the angel appointed for taking your life is going to take your life and you're going to be taken back to Allah. It's part of Tawheed. Though I'm talking about now the ways out. I have mentioned about eight. It is also part of Tawheed to believe that Allah is in the heaven. That is the belief of the Ahlul Sunnah. You don't say Allah is everywhere. No, if you want to maintain the methodology, Allah is in, in, in Al-Arsh. How? You don't know. According to Imam Malik, it's part of Tawheed to believe that there is torment and uh, there is uh, luxury in the grave, depending on what you did. Because of the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas in Sahih al-Bukhari, and because of the Quranic verses, Al-Imam, uh, al, uh, one of the imams in his Nunia, he says, وَالْقَبْرُ صَحَّ نَئِمُهُ وَعَذَابُهُ وَكِلَاهُمَا لِلْمَرْئِ مُدَّخَرَانِ Okay, in the grave there is enjoyment, may Allah give us such, and there is punishment, both they are there for a man, depending on what he did here on the face of the earth. Similarly, it's part of Tawheed, one should believe there is Sirat. You believe in the predestination, the Qadr Khairi wa Sharri. All these are there to keep you away from polluting the clean water of your Tawheed. Again, number nine, some of the things that help you as a remedy against committing shirk is one, should remember the purpose of his creation. And he should remember that if you do shirk, wallahi, all you did will be spoiled. I quoted the ayah in chapter number 39, verses number 65 and 67. I'm only repeating because ma takarrara takarrara. Ma takarrar takarrar. What is oft repeated is oft assimilated. Take it again. Walakad uhi ilayka. وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ وَلَتَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ بَلِ اللَّهَ فَعَبَدُ وَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ If you associate a partner with Allah, all your deed will be spoiled. وَلَوْ أَشْرَكُوا لَحْبِطَ آمَالُهُمْ And I also quoted a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari in Kitab al-Tawheed. Imagine, Imam al-Bukhari started with Kitab al-Iman. Okay? Kitab al-Iman is about Tawheed now. After long sojourn, the last book in Bukhari is Kitab al-Tawheed. He began with Tawheed. He finished the book, his compendium, with Kitab al-Tawheed. And I told you, Hadith number 7,371, 7372, 7373. All the Hadiths of Ibn Abbas saying when the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, sent Muaz to Yemen, he told him, Ya Muaz, you are going to meet people who know the book. The first to start with them is Tawheed, not prayer. That is why Imam al-Albani is saying, At-Tawheed, awwalin ya ibadallah. 
Start with Tawheed. Oh, yeah, Allah's servant. Similarly, number 10, 9 or 10, one of the way to fight shirk, the opposite of Tawheed, is you should be praying. The prayer says, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ushrika bika wa ana a'alamu wa a'udhu bika lima la a'alam. Take it again. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ushrika bika wa ana a'alam wa a'udhu bika lima la a'alam. Take it again, brothers and sisters. It's a prayer, potent power to kill anything to kill your tawheed. Prophet taught us that. He says you should be saying, Allahumma, O oh Allah, in your old I seek your protection against committing shirk, the opposite of tawheed. Wa ana a'ala, while I know, wa astaghfiruka, forgive me what I did against tawheed unknowingly. Definitely, Allah is kareem, Allah is bounteous, Allah is generous. Allah is incalculably generous. He is going to protect you, to preserve you, to shield you against the commitment of shirk. That is very, 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 very important. Similarly, part of the way, if you see somebody mentioning somebody's name, like somebody saying, Allah likes it and you, Muhammad, likes it. Don't say that. Say, Allah like it, and then you like it. Imagine. Otherwise, you are just joining somebody, a created entity with Allah the Almighty. Allah is above that. Similarly, do not put any amulet around the neck. In our typical cultural society, you see parents putting something around their kid that when an animal crows, or give sounds in the darkness of the night, that thing around the girls are going to protect them. This is shirk, okay? Somebody hanging a horn of an animal in his house, telling you that is going to protect the house against the coming of the thieves. That thing you are putting is the thief itself. I'm telling you. It's the grand thief, because it, it is thieving and stealing your iman. A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim Similarly, it is also important uh, to know there are some traditional practices that if somebody sweep, is swept, if a woman is sweeping with her broom, if the sweeping teaches his leg, that man is not going to get married. It's a bad omen. This lead to shirk. These things just lily push and they can't be taken seriously. Or if somebody on coming out, his eyes are safe. On illegitimate children, if he goes to the market, he cannot make profit in his own sale. This is also a lie. Or some people believe that uh, if you marry this, if you marry this woman from this tribe, that nation, you are going to be rich. That is superstitious belief. Superstition has no house in the house of Islam. But it, it thrives amongst the uneducated. So it surprises me to see somebody, a highly intelligent person, with academic qualification, a doctor, professor, yet you see him swimming in the bloody mud, dirty mud of shirk. You know, so shameful with education. Yet the marabu is telling you are going to be X, Y, Z, living Allah the Almighty. You claim to be a Muslim. No, 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 no. These are the ways to look at the Tawheed holistically and it should be prescribed. So I am saying with the remaining five minutes, inshallah, wa ta'ala, once again, I am prescribing this, uh, what I call it, prescription. Because after medical diagnosis, prescription comes later. Once again, once again, for our Tawheed to be strong, remember, you should have your Tawakul in Allah. What is Tawakul? Tawakul is putting your trust in Allah. Nobody can ever harm you. Nobody. Nobody can bring any rest of the mind to you, save with Allah's permission. Nobody can make you rich. Nobody can make you pauperized. Nobody can do that, save the power of Allah the Almighty. Somebody with Tawheed doesn't rely on people, does not beg them. I'm not saying don't ask for your right. Ask for your right. But you have total trust 
in Allah the Almighty. You rely on Him. That is the way out. Similarly, if you want to marry, marry a woman with good toy. You, my sister, you want to marry? Get hooked yeah, by somebody with strong and irritable tawheed. Your children should be taught tawheed. When the child grows up, begin to be challenged, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, alayhi nahya, wa alayhi namutu, wa alayhi nadkhulu quburana, wa alayhi nakhruju min quburina, wa alayhi naqifu amam rabbina yawm al qiyamah. These are beautiful things to be teaching your kids because catch them young. Teach them at the early stage. You're going to be asked by Allah the Almighty because you are responsible for their training, for their upkeep, for maintaining their sound uh, tawheed. That is very important. That is very, 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 very important. Within the remaining three minutes, I want to also say it is part of Tawheed not to be envious of people's blessings. Somebody is a millionaire in your neighborhood, and so what? Ask Allah that gave him. Don't have ill feeling against him. Somebody has married a lady you struggle to marry. You go to Satan's to cause trouble in the matrimony so that you cause the man and the woman to be fighting, to be quarreling because of the satanic intervention. You are not a Muslim. Your Tawid is gone away. Why wouldn't you pray to Allah to salvage you? Similarly, somebody with good, good Tawheed, you see him positively patient, mark you positively. And his knowledge will be uplifted because of the beauty of Tawheed. Somebody with Tawheed, he does not believe there is you know, a, an angel, I mean, that there is a jinn that can intervene. Even if the jinn enters the body, we have the sonatic way and the Quranic methodology of exorcism, the processes of sending the Satan's packing. And why can't you fight Satan by reading Al-Baqarah? I'm going to round off my speech with this important hadith. The hadith in, is in Sahih Muslim. The hadith of Abu Umar al-Bahili. Listen to the Arabic text. The Prophet says, اقرأوا سورة البقرة فإن أخذها بركة وتركها حسرة ولا يستطيعها البطلة إن سهي مسلم He says Oh yeah Read Al-Baqara Because reading Baqara constantly ha, makes you happy If you leave it it's gonna make you bite your finger in anguish Baqara can save you from the intervention of the Satan Anyhow where Baqara is, has, is recited is above the power of Satan. Any shirk against the Tawheed cannot, can never, ever make inroad into the house. Where Quran is read and especially Baqara. How do you read Baqara if it is possible? Every day you finish your Baqara. How many verses? Oh, 260. To, is that correct? 200 and Baqara. 282, no, 286, yeah, verses. You can do this one on daily basis. That is going to be possible. This should mark the end of my presentation, asking Allah the Almighty to make it accepted. May Allah bless the United Nations Muslim community and the anchor man, our brother, Abdul Salam, all the brothers and sisters, whatever I have said that happened to be correct, may Allah Lord, all of us, the mistakes, may Allah forgive the mistakes and wipe away the mistakes from our heart, asking Allah the Almighty to send his blessings on his prophet, members of his house, household, and his sahaba, and all of the Muslim ummah, wherever they happen to be in this uh, globe. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yisifun wa salamun ala al-mursalina wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you so much. Uh, 
Sheikh. Thank you so much for your very vast knowledge and very important on this very important topic. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Despite the challenges of the network, uh, we can see uh, the network is something that is beyond our you have control over there. Mm. Yeah, yeah, the, the network is poor, but Alhamdulillah, you are able to, to communicate to us. We thank you so much for this. Barakallahu uh, feekum. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we have to understand Tawheed, the center map of every Muslim is Tawheed. Tawheed. And solidify our faith. It increases our taqwa, it increases our belief and our worship to our Lord Almighty. Tell we must understand it. That we must know the powers of Allah, the attributes of Allah, that Allah is the one and He's the only one that can do things to us in this world. Once we are able to get that, then our team will be on the right track. Today, so many people like the Sheikh says, you attribute or you connect certain things with human life, forgetting that these are things that can only be done by Allah alone. As a Muslim, we must understand that our life is centered in the hands of Allah. He's the creator, he's the, he's the forgiver. Al Gafar, Al Salam, Al Rahim, Al Malik is the king of the king, is the judge and the provider of justice. So there's nothing we can achieve, there's nothing we can do without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Tawheed is the beginning, is the bedrock. Once you are able to get the Tawheed, to Alhamdulillah, we are on the right track. So you have to get that. So many of us today, you find out that you see you're looking for a promotion, you're looking for something. And because you didn't get it, of course, Allah is not coming from the, from up to heaven to come to the wall and to, to, to the ground and do it for us. It is through somebody. But we must attribute every success and failure to Allah, every good and bad to Allah, everything that happened to us. Understand that it is Allah. Once you can get that, then you can be able to live in peace and be able to worship Allah and describe in the Quran. Nobody can.
Okay. Yeah. But before then, uh, yeah. Let's do this, bro. Okay, Mr. Allah, connectivity. They have question. I'm not going to come out. Hello, Malikum. Malikum, Mr. Allah. Your network was cutting off. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. I just saw that. I just saw the power went off. I'm the last. Uh, but I have a question. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, please. If I'm in posting. Bismillah. Okay. Now, um, salam alaikum, Gustav. Thank you very much for Sheikh. Thank you Allah. very much for your comprehensive uh, presentation of this uh, Tawheed. Zakim Allah. I I agree with you that indeed the bedrock of Islam is the belief in the ab absolute unity of Allah. And to declare it orally and back it up with deeds and practices. Yes, but <laughs> uh, Sheikh, will agree with me? I will speak for Ghana and Nigeria, where I come from, that this is, is a common practice within our these two countries. That uh, uh, most of us uh, from Makaranta are, are aware of some of these things that we oneness or believe in oneness of Allah and His attributes. Imagine if today. I want to go in to marry a second wife because I don't have the capacity. Instantly, there will be a, there will be a fight, there will be a problem in the house. Even though my wife will know that yes, I am husband has the capacity, he's taking good care of me, he's taking care of us, it's sooner of Rasul to go in for a second wife, instead of going out and fornicating. That is where the problem starts. Quickly, the families, the brothers and sisters will encourage her. Go to Malaboka. Go to Malaboka and go and change his mind. Or so the, 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 you know, the challenge is that our people know, for some of us, but they still, for myopic and selfish interests, we tend to put away these attributes and blame in the weed and then still go to people like Malaboka and go to consult. Even though what the husband is going to do is so he has to marry and take care of the still. So this to me is a challenge. I don't know how we can go about this. Some those who know are the ones you can pay to know are the ones who still go to the Boca Mala, they go to these people for consultation. If you look at them, they are you know, they know the Quran, they still they go. They go or people who are going to school, graduate philosophy and PhD holders and know that believing Allah is the way to Jannah. And yet still you see them going to Boca in the village when the corner there consultation. So that is my challenge. You know, my brother, I think you have already thrown the, 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 the you have already shed the light on this thing. And you mentioned two places, for example, Nigeria and uh, Ghana, just almost the same people there, especially the typical Hausa community. And generally, maybe African, if I can extend it, societies, you see. You see, women that you give example, somebody has the capacity, they were with her financially, economically, to go for the second wife. Yet the one in the house will be going to a boka, that is a fortune teller, a diviner, a, you know, a parapsychologist, a liar, you know, to forestall, to stop the husband from taking a second wife. And ironically, you will see that same lady preparing her daughter to send her to another house to be second wife over there. She refuses somebody coming, but she is causing trouble. Okay, trouble in another house. Look at the paradoxical irony, the ironical paradox, okay. Now, I said it earlier, somebody claiming to be knowledgeable, he is a certified, a certified ignorant person. Ignorant, but certified, with certificate. That is why paper qualification does not claim an educated person necessarily. Otherwise, enlightened person cannot descend so low to behave in this, as you put it, in this myopic way. If Allah is the one that has given green light to take for the second wife, marry as you desire of the women, two, two, three, three, four, four. But if you cannot maintain justice, just maintain only one by restriction. Now, we, all, we know all this. Quranically and sonatically, unfortunately, however, somebody claimed to be educated, behaving, you know, in a kind of erratic way. 
The way out, I said it. I analyzed about 10 ways out. 10 ways I analyzed. Number one is education. Now you are educated. You are just excellent this as what worries you. There are a lot of people with the same view with you. So if we can be talking, you know, hosting scholars through this important platform, you do it in America, we are here in Africa, and the world maybe is listening, or wherever that Allah makes what to go. The knowledge can go round. You say it there, I said in Nigeria, in Sierra Leone, in America, in Caribbean, I mean knowledge is the most important thing. I said it earlier, to be informed is to be formed. To be misinformed is to be deformed. They are deformed psychologically. Okay, so that is important. Go and seek for knowledge. People should be educated. People should be enlightened and try to be solved in the process of educating them. We ask Allah the Almighty to sanitize our matrimonies, to make us live in peace and stability so that we meet Allah in peace, not in pieces like I have said. Wallahu alam. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Yes, assalamu alaikum, madam. Thank you very much for that incisive um, lecture. Jazakallah khair. Uh, I, yeah, thank you very much. I, I always follow you on various platforms. I like to hear you at every point in time. Barakallah fiq. Yes. I, 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 we have this issue. Um, normally, especially, you have already mentioned some of the examples. My friend, uh, Abu Salam, has mentioned them. You go to hospital uh, with a, a, a challenge, a health challenge. Let's say malaria. Yeah, I say it's malaria. The doctor prescribes drugs to you, uh, and uh, luckily enough for you, um, you after two days, after two days of taking those drugs or injection, you get well. Obviously, you know wellness is only given by 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 Almighty Allah. It's not the drugs, but you we find ourselves because we are used, so used to it. Say, Kai, these drugs have actually worked for me. And next time when I go to the doctor, I will make sure that I take the same drug. So as if it is a drug that actually killed me. Oh, another example is um, with... Oh, network. Huh? It's from there. If you meet this man, he will get the job for you. Begin, of course, uh, at the back of your mind, you know it is Allah that, that did it. But you will now begin to say, uh, if not because of. Sign it. Fadal. Bismillah. My love, my love is frozen? Yeah, yeah. No. Sheikh, Bismillah. Yeah, he's... The question is to you. Uh, well, you know, as he was talking, there was some kind of hitch here from the connectivity here. Okay, Sheikh. Did you understand the question he asked? Well, partly. But he was talking about, for example, if somebody goes to a hospital on a malaria, for example, yes. and he happens to get killed by the drugs. So what is the status? What is the ruling? If you say, oh, this medical item has worked for me perfectly. That is not bad. That is called, yani, al-wasila il al ghaya. All right? If I say, oh, this car is, has worked for me. Oh, the driver can drive well. Oh, this gynecologist. Is... This is not bad. Provided you are not ascribing to him the power exclusively. It's quite different. But you know 
the doer of everything Allah the Almighty. There is a sabab. The ulama are saying, لا تعطي للوصيلة حكم الغاية. The غاية is the end. The end is Allah. The medicine is just means to the end. If you tell me the medicine and it itself cures you, then you become a kafir. That is why I say, oh, I thank Allah for this wonderful thing, the wellness I got. It is Allah, then the medicine. I mean, we have to be careful with our utterances even. Listen, somebody said to the Prophet, Sha Allahu wa Sha Rasulullah. Allah loved you, Muhammad. He said, hey, are you making me an opponent to Allah? You're making me against Allah? Say, Sha Allah, Allah only loves. So we have to kind of make our even utterance as well. Oh, this medicine is working. Thank to Allah. That's all. The, 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 the wonder is done. If you say, thank Alhamdulillah. Oh, my father gave me food. Alhamdulillah. By saying Alhamdulillah, that is, the, the, the magic is done there. But you say the medicine has worked for me perfectly and you keep quiet. No. That is why, don't tell me today we are going to all our program. Today I'm going to I'm going to Nigeria definitely. Who are you? Allah says, "Wala taqulanna li shay'in inni fa'ilun dhalika ghada illa an yasha Allah wa dhkur rabbaka idha nasid wa qul asa to the end of it in chapter number 18. Don't you ever say, "I am going to do X Y Z tomorrow except by Allah's permission." If you say I'm going to Kano, I'm going to New Jersey, I'm going to Texas, there is no there now. Say by the permission of Allah. That is why our journalists who are, you know, Islamically imbibed, they say, we are going to present you tomorrow, inshallah. But a non-Muslim say, I am going to do it. You cannot even scratch your eye, chin, skin without Allah's permission. So tell, say, the medicine has worked for me, alhamdulillah. That is the difference between somebody with Tawheed and somebody without Tawheed. Wallahu a'lam wa bihi tawfiq. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Sheikh. Uh, Brother Mohammed, in my, my little uh, addition to this, I, the, the concept of Tawheed in relation to your clarification is that Tawheed, as a Muslim, we must understand and believe in the powers, the attributes, the, 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 the names of Allah. We must understand that these are done only as Allah wishes. Of course, we do this, we get help, our wife cook for us and we eat, the doctor give us the medication. But once you have that feeling that all these are done within the powers of Allah, it is only Allah that can make sure, he is the only one that can make rich go poor, he is the only one that can make happiness go angry, he is the only one that can make suffering and peace, he is the only one that can, today, a typical example, the whole world is locked down. The whole world, rich, poor, big, small, white, man, girl, boy, all, we are locked up by just simple, simple, invisible virus. With the whole technology, with the whole resources, with the whole money and influences, nothing is moving. The virus has told even presidents who are infected with this sickness. Why? It is the power of Allah. It's only at the will of Allah that this will away so this is Tawheed we have to get that once you understand that listen these are things that can only be controlled and, and, and is, is handled by Allah then you are in good of course like like you rightly mentioned it's human nature that sometimes you say, oh uh, brother mom may help me to get that contract yes but Allah made it for you to get me that contract it is not just for you if you can be able to do that you could have done that for me time would have not gone longer before but you only did for me that because that's the time Allah has taken for you to help me you help me through the powers of Allah the will of Allah that is the concept of the Tawheed I hope we, we understand ourselves uh, very, very well um, uh, finally I just want to bring to the Sheikh and to let you know that I will collect his number if he permits that from you Abdul Salam I live here in Nigeria so I can always contact him on issues like this with, permi with, with permission. If I want to share anything. Permitted. Permits. Permitted. Thank you. Thank you, Sheikh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if 
this contribution to the Tawheed, but I have a question here. Uh, probably to contribute to the discussions. Okay. For me, another way of looking at it is uh, it's Allah that has made it possible for that for the knowledge to be available to even make the drug or medication to uh, give whoever it is eventually that has helped. And okay. if someone has helped you with something, it's Allah that has uh, made that person to be in that position yeah. where the person is to be able to help others. And uh, for, including for the uh, doctor who is, is able to uh, prescribe and then what gets better. It's Allah who has given that doctor the knowledge to be in the position where he or she is to have that level of understanding of the illness itself and what uh, treatment needs to be given. So uh, it's probably just broader than uh, uh, just looking at the end, but right, right going back even from the beginning just to uh, link it to the fact that uh, Allah has put people or processes in place to be able to uh, solve Yeah, and yeah. similarly, no, again, I'm... again, again, Mala Abdul Salam, let me chip in again on this very important issue. You see, somebody came to the mosque of the Prophet in Medina, sallallahu He said, Oh, Allah's messenger, this is my she camel, Tagua in Hausa. Should I leave it and come to meet you, or should I tie it down? He said, No, 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 go and tie it down and then rely on Allah the Almighty. So the ulama are saying, going for the means does not negate the concept of Tawheed. As the brother rightly said, you know, Allah created illness and he made his way out of it. So he makes others to be medically educated. Go to them. But you know, the ultimate cure is not the doctor. He's just an apparatus monopolized by Allah the Almighty. He can say anything, but then the, this does not go. So some people are saying, no, because of our belief in Allah, if disease come, I will not go, let me die. No, that is not how he go and look for medication, but you should know only Allah can do it. That is very important observation. In addition to what you have said, that is beautiful contribution. Jazakum Allah khaira. Thank you. And again, in addition to that, also like Sheikh Abdul Karim Adi told us in his students lecture, seeking knowledge, do not again, because you have the knowledge, brag over you. Mm. I think something that happened here, the governor of New York, last year during the highest day of the pandemic, Alhamdulillah, when she started getting down, as he opened his mouth and said, they did it. It's not God that did it. Subhanallah. <laughs> now, he was bragging because he thought he put some strategy on ground that controlled the, the, the the dead of or the, the spread of the sickness. But because he is lost in his own understanding, it was his own. He doesn't know that it was the power of Allah. And now, I, I, I don't want to use the word Allah is showing him, he is right now passing through some ter terrible situation again, reverting back to the, what he says that they did it. Now people are saying he lied, <laughs> that people are dying, they were covering it. So you see, Allah, you should, Allah, you should, Allah, you should, you should have even, you should, you should have even reminded him of Titanic. You know Titanic? In those yeah. years, okay, remind him, okay, Mr. Governor of New York, didn't you know what happened? Titanic in around 1902 or thereabout, the builder of the mighty Titanic said, not even God can sink it. What happened? In that New York where you are, it was sunk by Allah the Almighty. What about the challenger in American history? You know, challenger. Last 30 years, the challenger was challenged mid air. So, if any governor is talking, it's because he is lost. So, we as Muslims, we just laugh, you know, within our minds. We know Allah is everything. Uh, Barakallahu fiku. I have a question here, uh, Sheikh. Barakallahu fiku. It's not about Tawheed. Somebody posed this question. That he was driving, and unfortunately, a cheetah ran into him, hit the car, and that child died. And talk with the family. The family of the child, the deceased child, forgave him, told him they are forgiving him. So he left. Now the question is in terms of Tia. He was told that he had to pass 60 days non stop of Ramadan to pay Tia or to feed 60 needy people. He, he, he fed people, that means 60 needy people. But he's confused now, so people are telling him, no, he was in power of that. Ramadan, just but he was forgiven by the family. What is his ruling here? 
Now, we have to know that uh, causing somebody's death is of three kinds, according to the scholastic analysis, okay? There is what they call katulul amdi, intentional killing. If somebody does it, he should be killed. And the nafsa bin nafs, life for life. So if somebody drives, we have to look at the typological nature of his driving. If he is driving dangerously, example, his car has about 260 speedometer. He is driving at 240. He knocks somebody, no question of deer or fasting should be killed because the nature of driving makes it intentional killing. His tire are worn out without brake. And the roads are just, just like dead traps, like in Nigeria. And now he is driving dangerously. He, you're talking about fasting? No fasting here. He should be killed because he knows. But your, your, your own question should be, should be categorized, should be located within the unintentional killing. He is driving moderately. Okay, I'm just giving you in, in, in a wider perspective. He is driving mistakenly into somebody. In that case, he has to fast for 60 consecutive days and pay the deer. The family have the right to just say, okay, we are forgiven. But fasting is Allah's right. The deer, the blood money belong to the family. That's the difference. Okay, you don't combine. It's not feeding people, Matthew. you. In this very case, he has to fast for six consecutive days. All right? But the deer, the blood money can be forgiven by the family if they are forgiven. That's all. All right? But Allah's right, there is this fasting, he should do it. If he is sick after fasting for 30 days, let him get uh, cured. Then he just continues. That's the ruling. Wallahu a'ala mobi Thank you. The other question here, somebody asks that we talk about Islam condemn drawing, drawing of living things, human beings to draw other animals. But what is the ruling if you are making a drawing on, that is like uh, academically something that relating to your school and you, are, you, are, you draw or just you just want to draw you draw a, a human being? What is the ruling? You see, that? my brother, that is why Islam makes it easy for a Muslim to live in any given society without just uh, melting into the society the way sugar melts in the hot cup of tea. I am saying drawing is forbidden in the hadith of Ibn Umar. But somebody is compelled, is coerced, is forced. What can he do? Here comes the Islamic principle of Abdurra. As Sheikh Nasr Sa'adi says, وَلَيْسَ وَاجِبٌ بِلَقْتِدَارِ وَلَا مُحَرَّمٌ مَا أَطِّرَارِ وَكُلُّ مَحْضُورٍ مَا أَطِّرَارِ بِقَدْرِ مَا تَحْتَاجُهُ الدَّرُورَ That is principle in Nasr Sa'adi's treatise that there is no compulsion if there is inability. Don't compel me to go for Hajj. I don't have the money. So, وَلَيْسَ وَاجِبٌ بِلَقْتِدَارِ But, وَلَا مُحَرَّمٌ مَا أَطِّرَارِ If there is compulsion, no issue of something is haram. If I, if I don't eat dead meat, I'm going to die, let me eat it. Because of necessity. Now, if in academic system, you are compelled to draw the picture of a living thing, against your desire. You say no, they are saying no. And we need your qualification. You are going to be important by the society. You are compelled. The sin is against those compelling you. You don't like it. You say, oh Allah, you know, I don't want it. Because I, what can I do? A lady, for example, in New York can go without hijab. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Because of, though I know in New York, you see a lot of women go to their niqab. I have seen a lot of them there, okay. But I'm just giving an example. If an academic system somebody is compelled because of necessity, then at the ruratu to be hul mahdurat, things compelling makes illegal legal. But we have to be very careful with the issue of the rura, the rura. Some is not the rura. This, the system, you can tell, hey, I'm a Muslim. Is there any chance not to draw it and say, okay, you are, there is an exception to you? We don't make even this trial. We just entered the bundle wagon. But if you are compelled, you can't do it. In that case, that is the way out. Wallahu a'alam wa bihi tawfiq. Thank you. Finally, uh, Sheikh, a non-Muslim asked me this question. And he asked me that I, we Muslims say, Quran is the complete word of God. I say yes. And he said, is there anywhere in the Quran no, no, that when somebody is, okay, is there anyone in the Quran that speaks about over speeding, running red light, that if you do those things in Sharia, 
behind the trap to control and not losing to save life. What did the program say about save life? If you save one life, you can save humanity. So the link to it is that who you going to make that rule? Don't overspeed. If you overspeed, you'll be punished. Don't run red light. If you run red light, you'll be punished. The reason for doing those rules is to save life. And saving life is what Quran has been preaching about. We should be able to save life. But intentional or not intentional. That was my explanation to him. But I'm seeking more knowledge from you. I don't know if what I say is appropriate or there's other way I can be able to answer that. Jazakallah khair, my brother Abdul Salam. You have spoken well. But in addition to that, yeah, this kind of, uh, I call it comical question, came to one of our teachers here in Nigeria that somebody said, okay, you say everything. In Quran, you said this, okay, show me how bread is made <laughs> in the Quran. How is bread made? The Sheikh said, oh, that is very easy. He took the hand of the person asking this sarcastic question. He went to the baker. He said, please, Mr. Baker, how is bread made? Then the baker explains it. You can see, Allah says, Fas'alu ahla dhikri in kuntum la ta'lamun. Ask those who don't know if you know not. By this means, Quran contains everything. And especially in Islam, there are what the ulama are calling, they call it al-kulliyatul khams, the five necessary faculties. Islam teaches preserving five things under the ruriyat, preserving life, preserving intellect, preserving progeny, preserving wealth, and preserving religion. Hifdun nafs wal aql wal nasl wal mal wal din. You can see under preserving life, Allah says, Wala taqtulu anfusakum. Don't kill yourself. It's, it's, not, it's, it's, not, it's enough for you. Quran talks in bulk. The ulama in the way they make things explain. Even in the constitution, they give you things just in bulk. Lawyers of constitution come and make things clear. That is the system. So somebody shouldn't ask you, how is that done? No. You see, since preserving the life is part of it, so if you plunge yourself, you know you are going again. So there, traffic light comes. وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِكُمْ إِلَى التَّحَلُكَةِ Do not take your hand and throw into destruction. Is it not enough for you? It doesn't have to be till. So it contains everything, I can assure you. Similarly, Allah says what? قُلْ إِنَّ salati In Quran chapter 6, verse 162. قُلْ إِنَّ salati وَنُسِكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهْ Tell them, Ya Rasulullah, my prayer in the Salat, and my sacrificial offerings, and my living, my living, my living, and my death are for Allah. If my living is for Allah, it means everything I should do it in total agreement with Allah's injunction. Driving, eating, drinking, whatever. You go to Quran. Do it accurately. Allah give you life not to destroy it. So it's very easy. It doesn't have to tell you this is how you eat and drink. No, it's there. And you can go to the hadith. Hadith are there to explain everything. Allah says, we have sent the Quran for you to explain. وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَا عَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ In Quran chapter 16, verses 44. Ya Muhammad, we send the Quran to sort of explain in detail. So traffic... Whatever is there in the Quran, in the light of what I have given you, what I gave you, what you also said is very comprehensive and very, very relevant in that very respect. Wallahu alam. Thank you so much. Uh, we are almost on time. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any question or any concern. Bishop is here. Uh, Okay. Imam Karim, Alhamdulillah, I can see you here. Thank God. Uh, brothers, we should pray for him. He was able to get his vaccine. Alhamdulillah, may Allah protect you from that. Uh, so at this time, uh, Sheikh, uh, I would request you to give us a closing to us. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt. Wa afina fi man afayt. Wa tawallana fi man tawallayt. Ya Rabbal Alameen. Oh Allah, we ask you to make us better and good Muslims. 
May Allah preserve our Iman until we meet Allah in peace and stability and tranquility. May Allah remove this pandemic across the globe, Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah make us be out of this lockdown to be up, not down, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzat Amma Yisifun. Wa salamun ala al-Mursaleen. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Mm-hmm.